Okay, guys, so what we're going to do now is something we're doing every now and then, and we are going to be having the Unleashed Wellbeing Corner, okay? Uh, we've done this several times. We did it during the uh, Mental Health Week, and uh, we did it for the VE Day when we talked about forgiveness. And um, it's great to have Roz here. Uh, Roz is a very familiar face to all of you guys at uh, Unleashed. She co-directed Cross and Switchblade, very involved with Millennium Mysteries, has done loads, you know, over the years. Uh, she's on our action team, she and Brian, they do masses in the background that people don't know about. But the great thing about this is that also, she was in another life a professional counsellor. So uh, it's a win-win situation for us at our niche because uh, we've got Ros here and we're gonna be talking about loss. Obviously we, um, we've been talking about monologues, being on your own. And uh, we've specifically been looking at Shadowlands today, which is uh, a su such a sad uh, play. We've been talking about it already, but it's basically about loss. And it's about how um, C.S. Lewis losing his wife, it completely threw him. And he wrote these two very different books, you know, The Problem with Pain and The, and, and the Grief Observed. So we thought it'd be really good, Ros, to have you here because uh, just really conscious that during lockdown, Loss can take many forms. It can take the form of what we've been talking about, bereavement, but it can also be the loss of other things. And um, that can have a massive effect on our, our well-being. Do you just want to sort of uh, elucidate on that? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Martin. I I've been thinking about it myself this week, and I was thinking about grief, and most people think immediately grief means death. But actually, we grieve lots of things, and in terms of loss, people will have been losing lots of things over lockdown. I mean, it's, it's that whole thing of loss of, of company, of being isolated. It's the loss of contact uh, with friends and family and just going out and meeting new people. The, the drama club, we've lost that in terms of immediate contact. And also um, loss of opportunity, uh, things that people were maybe looking forward to doing that they haven't done relationships that they may have started, which haven't been able to be continued as easily or formed. And I guess, yeah, just loss of, loss of four months, three or four months of this year, loss of some of the summer. Uh, even if we've been able to go out a little bit, we've been fairly confined in what we can do. So I was giving that some thought and thinking, it's amazing really, humans are so varied in their, hum in their human emotions. And how does that, uh, express itself in loss. Um, of course, initially, when people experience loss, they may not recognise it as such. I mean, being shut in for the number of weeks that we have been in lockdown, we may not have thought of all the losses that we were experiencing until maybe now when we're starting to emerge a bit. And we look back and you think, oh, golly, I could have done this, I could have done that. Some people, of course, have lost jobs. And some people who might have been looking to get a job may have lost that opportunity because that is no longer an available thing for them. So how do we deal with it? And of course, em emotionally, first of all, it's quite often denial. I mean, when, when COVID came in and it said, look, hey guys, we've got to stay home. This can kill you. Our first reaction probably was to feel very vulnerable and, af and a bit afraid or just a bit fed up. Actually, I've got to stay home. <laughs> But then came the, uh, the sorrow of loss and the sadness. I mean, those of us who have, I mean, I'm in the grandparent stage of life, can't see my grandchildren, can't see my children, and other people's losses of their relationships. All those things make us sorrowful and sometimes very frustrated and angry. And how we express that can come out in all sorts of ways. Quite often, in tears, I think we talked about that the other week when I said sometimes I woke up, I was crying and I didn't really know why. Yeah. And I think, you know, well, it was my way of expressing I, something I couldn't speak in words. And sometimes there are those things. So, and of course the biggie that everyone's worried about now is depression. Yeah. And I mean, depression is a terribly sapping experience. And, it, and, and mostly it takes the form of going quiet, feeling confused, feeling a bit foggy in the brain, can't think or don't want to do much. So there's lots of ways that people do experience 
loss and grief and that, that comes into the grief of death as well so yeah all those things are there no that's really good Roz and I think I think what you said about tears is really important because like we've said before actually um, denial is not a good thing denial oh. is not a healthy thing and actually it's really good to be able to express how you feel and if that means actually being able to get it out there and and cry uh, you know, I myself, I'm a very emotional person. I, uh, my emotions are very clear to everybody. I wear my heart on my sleeve. But, you know, I actually think it's a really good thing, particularly for blokes, to be able to um, express how they feel um, with tears. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, expressing how you feel uh, with tears. I think actually it's better out than in. So I think that's a really, really good point. Um, yeah. So, I think the other thing is then, of course, we've all been there now. It would be interesting to know from the folks who watch how they have helped themselves, what things they've done yeah. in a coping way. So that, that would actually be quite useful, wouldn't it, to hear how other people have been doing that. But yeah, in terms of... Carry on. No, carry on, carry on. I was going to say, I mean, obviously, one of the obvious things is that, uh, you know, uh, particularly guys who, uh, people who struggle with an addictive personality, I think one of the hardest things is that uh, it's very easy, and I think we said this before, that actually in lockdown when there's no one there, you know, you can either comfort eat or drink too much or, you know, use whatever, and that's not great, you know, because actually there's not nobody to stop you or, you know, you're, you're in a situation where you're perhaps not surrounded by the support that you would normally get that would stop you doing that. Um, and that's not great. So, um, so Ros, what would you say were good alternatives if people are feeling like that? Yeah. Well, the first thing to say is that not one, but one size doesn't fit all. Everybody has their own mechanisms. But basically, there's distraction, there's soothing, and there's balance. Now, distraction doesn't mean pretending it's not there, as we've just said. We need to acknowledge the feelings. And sometimes we need to express those feelings in a safe way but you know thinking of body mind and spirit if you're in your body not drinking too much not eating too much are obvious things to avoid if you can but to put in their place something else like walking running exercise, running exercise, and any sort i mean i for me you know standing at the bottom of the stairs and doing step ups on the bottom of the staircase you don't need a gym yeah you know i've seen Wait, bean cans. <laughs> you know, there's all sorts of fun ways of doing that. Yeah. And loads of suggestions on TV. In terms of mind, there's there's music. I mean, I, I'm a musical, you're a musical person. Finding, I was listening to John Denver this morning. <laughs> I, I love John Denver and I was listening to John Denver this morning and it just, it just made me feel relaxed. I thought, oh gosh, I need to listen to him more again because he really helps me. Uh, not not everybody's cup of tea. Um, artwork, painting, scribbling, drawing, colouring books, anything. Artwork of any kind. Knitting, sewing, um, paper mache, modelling, all those sorts of creative stuff. And of course, perfectly for this programme, writing and acting and 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 exchanging those ideas yeah. over the this programme, which is brilliant. And in terms of spirit mindfulness yep prayer yeah tai chi yoga yeah any of those pilates. pilates any of those things that bring a different pace bring a calmness a something that's soothing and of course balance is is making sure you do a bit of everything and not one thing obsessively until it becomes a yeah. distraction yeah no totally and unhealthy yeah, no, totally. that's really helpful. But what would you say, particularly uh, with regard to uh, bereavement, because we've been talking specifically about yeah. that. And uh, obviously the play is about bereavement. And, you know, there are possibly people watching who've lost relatives to COVID. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of people who are really struggling. Um, you know, it was wonderful to see the choir. Uh, I don't know whether you saw the Gareth Malone programme the other day. I work at Old Way yeah. and uh, the headmistress, her... That chat was uh, her husband who wrote the song, lives in Newton Abbott, yeah. lost his father. Absolutely tragic, but the way in which, you know, you've been able to express it by using music. What would you say were, A, the key things for, you know, if someone's initially lost, you know, someone they love, 
how to cope, what's, what are natural reactions to expect? Sure. Um, I think the first thing is not to avoid it, but to acknowledge how you feel. Sometimes you will feel angry, sometimes you'll feel utterly sad, and sometimes you'll be taken by surprise by a piece of music, yeah. the smell of cooking, something that jogs a memory. Any of those things, don't beat yourself up. If it takes you by surprise, acknowledge it and just go to the memory and say, yeah, that was a, that was a wonderful time with that person. Enjoy the memory and don't feel guilty about the memory. And don't be afraid to talk to other people. I know one of the greatest things is that sometimes when folks have lost someone, I had a friend here the other day talking about her husband who had died and just saying, oh, he didn't like to do so and so. And I'd say, oh yes, I remember that. And we would talk about the person who died and relive the memory together. Yeah. So sharing memory, but also, um, you know, finally and, and, and not utterly, but acceptance, accepting the, the um, understanding that there's good memories, there's upsetting memories. It's okay to have those feelings. And, taking care of yourself through the things we've just talked about, but also looking forward, looking forward and thinking, okay, if that person was here, what would they be saying to me now? Yeah. You know, they'd probably be saying, if it's someone close to you, something encouraging, like, well done, or you're so good at that. You've always been good at that. Yeah. And not being afraid to hold that memory mm. in a safe, but um, a helpful place. Yeah. And, and not to be afraid of the emotions. And often there's maybe one or two people you know really well that you can just phone up and say, I'm feeling wretched or yeah. can we go for a walk or yeah. do you remember when? Uh, yeah. I lost, my I, think, mom, I lost my mom a year ago. I mean, literally the anniversary was last weekend. And yeah. uh, the thing that, that I really um, surprised me weirdly is that uh, during lockdown, um, I just felt... It, so much more keenly you know where I was thinking I was doing quite well the last two months have been really hard leading up to the anniversary and uh you know my wife she's incredibly supportive and she's very understanding and she you know she knows me better than anyone else so she's brilliant but it was it really took me by surprise that even though it was a year on how 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 the emotions were so raw uh, leading up to that anniversary and how in the last couple of months I just you know it was almost like it just happened um yeah. it's it's a weird thing grief but um i i would say you know having people around you perhaps sharing it with others who feel the same you know if you've got siblings that's a massive help um being articulate and i think also doing symbolic stuff you know um like planting flowers you know when you said about things that prompt memories you know flowers and times of the seasons like my my mother loved uh, that song "We'll Gather Lilacs." We sang it at her. Oh, yeah, you know, a few. Ivan Novello. Ivan Novello. That that was their we sort sang of courting, father's funeral. <laughs> yeah, courting song. And um, so when they come out, it's like even and all the hydrangeas coming out. It just brought it all back, you know, because we had them at her funeral. But you know, I think the important thing is to remember that actually a death and loss is part of life. And uh, you know, we've all, it's the inevitable, isn't it? So we've all got to face it. And, yeah. uh, actually, I think that's acceptance, isn't it? Finding yeah. its place in your life and say and embracing uh, the good parts of your life that that's yeah. affected, and saying yes, that is part of my life, and now I must journey on. Yeah. yeah. And of course, in in uh, C.S. Lewis's play Shadowlands, he believes there is definitely something beyond. Yeah. 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 So he he has a hope there. Yeah. Which sustains him as well. Yeah, fantastic play, fantastic play. And both those books, really interesting how differently they're read, they read. One's very academic, one's very emotional because the, you know, he, he'd had the second book he wrote, he'd been there, he'd actually, he'd experienced the, you know, the, 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 the grief yeah. of birth. Ros, that's really helpful. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I think this uh, little, this little wellbeing corner, I think Yay. it's a really great thing. We're not going to do it every week, but every now and then when it fits, I think it's fab. So, Ross, thanks and so much. The, the, the main message is take care of yourselves. Be yes. kind. Be yeah. kind to yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Yeah, bless you. Yeah.
Ros, we'll, we'll see you again, but thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.